Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. The church I belonged to when I was in high school was a special one. It had historical significance. It was the first Protestant church founded west of the Rockies. It had personal significance. It was a church that was mine. It wasn't the church my grandparents belonged to or my mom or even my brother, just me and of course my friends from high school. It would turn out to have vocational significance as well because it was when I first preached as part of Youth Sunday. Of course, at the time, I thought it would be the only time I preached. But even more significant than any of that was the statement that was read as part of worship each Sunday morning. It went something like this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the great and first commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. A new commandment I give you, that you love one another as I have loved you. Reading that week in and week out, those words took root in me and have stayed with me all these years. I didn't know it at the time, but have since learned that while all those statements come from the Bible, they do not appear altogether like that. The first part is from something called the Shema in the Hebrew Bible and is quoted by Jesus in the Gospels of Matthew and Mark when he is asked, what is the first or greatest commandment? The second statement is also from the New Testament and also quoted by Jesus in the Gospels of Matthew and Mark. And then the last part is from the Gospel of John, just a couple of chapters before today's reading, though it is said again in our Gospel reading this morning in slightly different form. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Those are very powerful words and this is a very powerful commandment Love one another as I have loved you. In the first verse of today's gospel, we are told that this is the same love that God, the Father, has for Jesus. As Jesus, as Father, as God, Father loves Jesus, so Jesus loves us. And as Jesus loves us, so we are to love one another. The Greek word for love here is agape, a self-sacrificing type of love. This commandment sounds like such a good, good idea. Love one another as Jesus loved us, as the Father loved Jesus. There's just one catch. We can't do it very well. We are not capable of loving as Jesus does, as the Father does, because we're human. And humans cannot sustain such a lofty notion as self-sacrificing love towards one another as Jesus demonstrates with his death on the cross. As Jesus says, no one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. So why does Jesus give us such a difficult commandment? Does he want us to fail? Of course not. Though we cannot achieve such self-sacrificing agape love on our own, the spirit working through us can. That's what Jesus means when he speaks about abiding in his love, just as he has abided in the Father's love. Jesus tells us, I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Jesus wants us to be complete, to be whole in a way we can never be on our own. Jesus tells us three other important things in today's gospel that he has called us that he has chosen us, and that he has appointed us. Jesus says, I have called you friends. Note that he doesn't say, you have earned my friendship, or you have earned the right to be my friends, but I have called you friends. Just by saying the words, I have called you, Jesus has made it so. If he hadn't, we could never have attained that status on our own. And then Jesus says, I chose you. He even prefaces with, you did not choose me. This is so much different than how you obtain most things in your life. You choose what colleges and jobs to apply for, 
and are then chosen based on your merit, such as grades, recommendations, and interview. You choose what car you want to drive, what house you want to buy, what you want for lunch, what church to attend. But with Jesus, it's not up to you. Jesus says, you did not choose me, but I chose you. All we can do after that is say thank you. Finally, Jesus says, I appointed you. He goes on, for he has appointed you for a purpose, to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. This goes back to the vine and branch imagery from last week's gospel. You are appointed to bear fruit, not of your own, not on your own, but as a branch attached to and fed by Jesus. Today we celebrate and honor some of the ways that some of us bear that fruit. We honor mothers, those who provided motherly care, and all those who have been appointed to raise and nurture children, who in turn will bear fruit of their own. Though this morning we especially lift up mothers, Jesus loves each of you, whether you are a mother or not, and he calls each of you friend, chooses each of you, appoints each of you, and gives each of you everything you need to do as he commanded so that you may indeed love one another as he has loved you. Amen. We sing our hymn of the day, number 708, and I invite you to stand as you are able. <laughs> 